Okay, I'll call the meeting for order. Start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You want to hear a motion to adopt tonight's agenda? Make a motion to adopt tonight's agenda, November 13th. Okay. November 13th. Yeah. Oh, so I'm said 15th, sorry. Any comments or questions by the board? All in favor? Okay. Motion carried. Approval of minutes of 10 23 23. I also have a November 8th special meeting and November 9th special meeting there. Right. 10 23 23 and 9. 11 8 and 11 9. Any comments or questions by the board? All in favor? Uh, motion carried. Road report. Uh, so since our last meeting, we've basically been doing winter preparation, maybe setting up trucks for winter snow plowing, whatnot, uh, cleaning up the yard for winter firewood, um, kind of going, doing our checks and double checking all of our equipment and everything. And um, we spent a couple of days cleaning up the transfer station, making sure they were all set through the winter and stocking up their salt and everything. Um, I spoke to HP Fairfield today, and they're saying worst case scenario, the last month of November is when we'll see the new tandem. Oh, last, last week? Last, last week of November, yep. Um, it's it's in paint. It, once it comes out of paint, which hopefully will be like today, tomorrow, <laughs> um, they just have to install the airbag over the passenger steer tire and the go light on the roof, and the truck will be ready. And they'll either deliver it to us or we can go get it. So, where is that's it? where that it's in. Um, it's in New Hampshire, HP Fairfield. Um, <laughs> I can't think of where in New Hampshire. It's about two and a half hours away, I believe. Are they going to register or do we have to do that? Just ask them, Joel. So, temporary plate. <clears throat> He's going to kick me the information that we need to get our insurance and in to do the register, but it'll, it'll come with a 30 day temp plate, 30 or 60 day temp plate on it. So, it'll be good to go, you know, right out of the gate. And hopefully, that'll give us enough time to get our own plate on it. But um, he'll give me all the information on that so we can get the thing set up and basically start using it the, as soon as it arrives. I, I did opt to have them deliver because there's no extra fee and it saves us about an entire day of traveling and whatnot. So, does it have to have change on the tires? Does it have to have anything for winter? It'll be all set. So, if it's a bad storm or ice, we'll probably put chains on the tires, but because this is a different style truck than a different style spreading than what we've used in the past, this has a bed chain in the built into the body, so you can actually carry more material per trip, probably about as twice as much as the hopper sanders that we currently run. And it puts your traction in front of your drive tires instead of driving over everything and then laying down your traction. So this is a you know, this is this is where most municipalities and, and VTRANS and DOTs are at as far as using these trucks like this. That's, that's a good um, idea. Yeah, I mean, you're you're giving yourself your traction. Yeah. You're providing it yourself. So, yeah, maybe we'll run things on it. We get a nice storm. Maybe we'll put triples on it just to ensure driver safety. Um, but uh, I think we're going to try it in the lighter the lighter storms. I think we'll try it without chains. Uh, depending on the driver's confidence, just to, just to see how you know how we feel about the style. A lot of other towns that run these these front discharges don't even you know, they don't even chain up until it's really nasty out or whatever. But uh, I do like to I do like you know chains cost money and we burn through about one to two sets a winter 
but they also ensure that the truck and the driver come back the way they went out. And I don't really think that $400 or $700 set of chains can replace your one tow bill or medical payments or any one of us having to call somebody's family and say <coughs> somebody didn't come back today. So, um, so I, I think we'll, we'll, we'll probably use chains more than not just mm -hmm. to ensure safety, but it should be good. It should, should be moving toward the future of things. Yeah. Um, as far as what we've done and stuff that basically covers that, um, while we're on it, we kind of discussed the four tens previously. I printed off um, some copies of what a couple of the towns that um, stay on four tens all year round. Um, so there's two threads. I can only find one of the threads in the email and. This one thread just has these two towns. There's probably about 10 total that responded to Vermont local roads uh, thing, but you can kind of briefly read those and, and they state how they found that four tens that the guys coming in earlier actually cuts back on some of those early morning overtime hours. You know, nine times out of 10, we're coming in at, it's real bad, 4.30, 4, 4.30. But to beat the buses, we're definitely coming in at five to make sure that we put a fresh layer of sand down or cuffed off an inch or two of snow or whatever. Um, and also, I can personally add that I know the town of Hampton also stays on four tens all year round. Um, so, you know, it, and uh, if anybody wants to talk to, you know, town of Hampton or whatever, I do have this. Highway superintendent's number, so you can kind of. One minute. When do we go off the four tens? We haven't yet. Yeah, but what, what was the date in our handbook? Um, Isn't it after deer hunting or? No, it was. I think it's typically oh. beginning of November, the end of October, if I'm not mistaken. That's what I was wondering. I couldn't remember if it was it mid or beginning. Over the, over the years since I've been here, there's, depending on the board configuration it's always it's some of the, some of the um boards mm -hmm. are more uh robust discussions about it and then some of the boards are like it's working for the highway department um let them use their judgment um the last official motion was uh I don't know. It was it was something? What's the how they lay? What's the one Labor Day or Indigenous people say? I think the last one was that's when it was supposed to end. End it's supposed to end. Mm -hmm. But even even after that um, motion was made, the highway department always seemed to push it a little bit further out. Further out. Yeah. I mean, do you feel confident that you and your guys feel like you'll get more? You feel like you'll utilize it and get what you need to get done? Yeah, I, I do. I, I Especially when we're doing projects, the four 10-hour days seem to be much more – I know it's only two hours, but they really seem to be much more productive. And I think that's why a lot of people do the four tens instead of just staying on five eights. Um, because when you're starting or finishing a project, you get that two extra hours, not only to set up, but to set up and start doing some work. And when you're trans transitioning between projects or whatever, it, it really allows for a, a pretty, you know, accomplishing day. It doesn't mean you're done on Friday if there's a snowstorm or Saturday or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, we, you know, regardless whether it was five, eight, five, eight four, eight, tens, four eight, or whatever. Matter, we're or, still going to be out. Yeah, we're still going to be out. Um, See, without a lot of the board here, well, two of the members here, I personally have no problem with the four-day work week. But before we vote on it, we should have the full board here so everybody understands where we're going with that. Um, and we probably won't have the full board until December 11th because I'm not going to be here on the 27th and I know Val isn't going to be here on the 27th. So I don't know how you guys feel, but just stay on the four-day work week. 
until we can make a decision on it. That's up to you guys. I'm just throwing it out there. Until we get everybody here so that we can all discuss it. Everybody's on the same page. Yeah, I feel like you know best. You know you guys, you know what your work, and you certainly are out there getting things done, and especially yeah. this season with the snow and the ice. I'm good that, but yeah. You know, after, after reading what those couple of towns said and, and you know, talking to Hampton and stuff, um, when they say that, it, that the pay balances out and it's it's not really any significant difference, I I, I think it would be good. <clears throat> and it's it's a pretty good incentive. You know, we do get a, a nice Friday in the middle of winter. Usually we don't get that many weekends off, if any weekends off. Um, well, so, so even if we do have to come in and sand first thing in the morning on a Friday, we, we're still not committed to that whole day, you know, and, and maybe the Saturday or the Sunday is a 24 hour storm coming up. So it kind of gives you, gives the guys a chance to recharge and, and whatnot too. And, um, yeah. so how do you guys feel about it? Are you, are you guys okay with them staying on four days until December 11th when we get the whole board back together and discuss it? So, because I I don't know how they feel. That sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah, All right. Well, let's let's continue <laughs> yeah, for the four day work week until December 11th, and then we'll make a decision with the, with the other board members. Sounds good. Thank you. Uh, as far as the red report goes on my end, unless anybody has any questions, comments, or concerns, then <coughs> straightforward tonight. So. All right. Anybody have any questions for Joel? Well, thanks for the extra time looking at roads this week. Taking out last week, I should say. Oh, you're welcome. Two days. All right. Good. Community development. Okay. Um, <coughs> so I just so you all know, I'm having a little problem with my hearing tonight. I have no idea if I'm I have that every night. <laughs> all right. <laughs> What? I, you're good. <laughs> I'm good. You can hear me okay? Thanks for that. I'll go like this. You can go up. Thank you. Like <laughs> I missed uh, almost a whole week of work last week with a sinus infection that has not gone away. So, um, so I have four updates for tonight. One, I wanted to let the, no the board know that I submitted the municipal planning grant application for merger study on November 1st. Uh, the decision for that program will be sometime in December. If it is awarded, um, we would start, uh, we would issue an RFP and select a consultant probably in the first quarter of 2024. Um, so I will let the board know as soon as we hear from them. The total amount was 10,000, or sorry, the total project was $11,530 with the 10% match for the town being 1,153 and the rest from the grant. Um, I had, before I got sick, I had a conversation with our our contractor service provider for Tolton Recreation um, about the website. So we we um, spoke about a few different scenarios to bring the three websites into one. Um, I have a scope of services drafted and some help from locals who have volunteered to help and have been involved with this before um, reviewing that. So. As it stands right now, we have an estimate that needs to be revised from Ecopixel, um, an estimate from the current service provider for ongoing services for PultonyBT.gov. Um, and I would like to solicit a couple of our estimates so that we can com compare now, them. Does that Pultony rec that you're doing that, are you in trying, is anything with the Boys and Girls Club going to incorporate into that? Um, I have the, I have the, access to the website so I can update it as Fulton Rec would like to see updated. There is a space on the website for current events or events of interest. So if there is something that needs to go up there, I'm happy to do that. Um, I just need the information and whatever content needs to go on there. So we I have discussions with other school, you know, just uh, Fairhaven, the principal and, and the high school principal in both elementary schools and some parents. Yeah. When we had some know problems here in town with some of our youth about the summer rec and boys and girls clubs coming in to work with the Pulteney rec for the for the summer for those kids that are in, at an age group seventh and eighth grade yeah. so to speak yeah. um, 
It's not getting a lot of traffic right now. Um, it, last summer, the most traffic that website got was during the 4th of July. Um, and it was just launched last year too. So it's it's a little new, um, but it does have a lot of external links and it has a lot of content information um, about recreation, recreational opportunities in Fulton. So I'm happy to have anything that you okay. can do too. And that was built by EcoPixel? Yeah. Yes, that one was. That was through the Borac grant. That pretty straightforward to manipulate that website. Um, I don't. I don't know that I would call it straightforward necessarily. Um, I don't. I'm. I'm sufficient in website. Of, you know, updating content and that kind of thing. I'm not fluent in it. Um, I've learned it and I can navigate my way through it. But it might be a little challenging to add new users. Um, we can get training on it if we want to continue with that platform. Um. The other thing that I want to let you know is I, I think that I could spend some time removing dated material from the town's website, um, and it would probably help once we get to the point where we're combining those three websites into one. Great idea. Yeah. So I will start to do that. Um, so that's it for the website. Uh, the third thing I wanted to tell the board was that in my role as a liaison to PDRC, um, that PDRC has received the vibrancy funds that are being provided to the state's downtowns this year. So it's $25,000 to each of the downtown organizations. Um, and PDRC will be seeking a contractor to help with um, a variety of tasks, administrative, technical assistance, and business outreach, that type of thing. So um, they will be doing that in the, um, probably in the next couple of months. Um, and just wanted to use this platform to let um, folks know that PDRC is looking for a new board member and seeking letters of interest to anyone that's in, that wants to uh, wants to um, potentially join PDRC. So the last thing I wanted to share is that I am working on a in uh, Borac application with the Clock and Cafe at Cones Point Country Store. Um, so Borac is Pulte, the last time Pulteney had a Borac grant was in 2019, and there was uh, five or six different elements to it. It was the marketing campaign and the brochure and website. Um, the new owners of the, of the country store are interested in reopening the water trail that is accessed from Lake St. Catherine through the Halls Bay Channel. Um, and the project is well enough evolved that it could go to Vorak for an implementation grant, which is a minimum of $50,000 for a grant um, with no match to either the- Oh, well, I was just gonna ask that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I got that front and center. <laughs> um, so I've had a lot of support in developing this application from the business owner um, and also from Jeremy Jones from the Lake St. Catherine Association who helped to identify the permit that existed previously when this was open. Um, the channel was open and uh, identified a few of the state agencies and permits that would be, be required to reopen that channel. Um, Jeremy's been great, Nicole's been great, and um, it, it looks like a good application. <clears throat> um, so I'm sharing it tonight sort of as a soft opening that we do need someone to sponsor the application. So um, I would be asking the town to consider sponsoring sponsoring the Borac application for the store um, for this project as economic development for a new business owner in the town. Um, I've invited Nicole to come to the 1127 select board meeting where we'll have the <coughs> projects. <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. The project will, will be more fully evolved um, and we can, we can talk about what all is entailed, but I wanted you all to know that I was working on that. Yeah, that's, uh, I have no problem with supporting. Is that. there, um, are you, can you expand upon what the grant is, what it's for, or, or is that still gelling? Um, the specific project you mean? Mm -hmm. It's still gelling. Um, there are a couple of components to it that are not resolved as to whether they would qualify for the grant or not, but the primary, um, the, the gist of the grant is to um, just essentially widen the channel, open the channel, use it the way that it was used previously for um, kayak or quiet water access to the store. 
I don't know how long ago it was, but I do have a lot of information um, on the permit that existed before from the chairman's house. So, <laughs> are we meeting a man made fan? It is, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, if the town um, agrees to serve as the sponsor and we put together a project that, um, you know, is fully lined up, we could, I would like to go back to the St. Catherine Association and ask for a letter of support. Um, but we have, uh, the grant application closes on December 15th, so we have a little while to get to the comments. I think it's a good thing, personally. You know, I won't be here for that meeting, but I am for, for that. Great, yeah. Nicole has a lot of ideas about um, ways that she might use the property to kind of re use it in ways that had been used historically, but also some new um, development scenario, development options for that property, so. Mm -hmm. it's Where's the country store? It's uh, Autos, what used to be Autos? Coast Plate Wells. A mini goal. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> yes, thank you. That's what I was think. Yeah, actually the mini golf is, uh, they've, they have invested in that to get that back open already too. Not that they're gonna do it this winter, but <laughs> um, in the spring, so. Good. That's a good project. Something like that would be very helpful. Now, on that the channel, um, that land that Terry was talking about <coughs> down by the uh, what down yeah down there that um, the, the sports sportsman uh, agency mm -hmm. took over. Mm -hmm. That could be also turned into a launching pad for kayaks. And I don't know if it, what didn't we talk about that? That it can or can't be because of its. I was thinking more outdoor. I mean, I think the Sports Federation envisioned that according to. That's what the Terry thought. Um, yeah. I think, I think because that's not, because the channels, they see the channel the way I understand it is. It's a man-made structure, so it's not part of the lake, quote unquote. Um, and I think the from some of the discussions I've had with some state folks, where you're talking about is more is more like this is a wetland thing. So yeah. it's I think it's a bit more complicated. Yeah. I don't think we can tear it and make it so you can bring a boat. I think there was something in there that we couldn't do that. There, there is a class two wetland in the area. Um, so that is part of what needs to be reviewed. I don't think um, from preliminary investigation that it would impact what's being proposed by. Right. I was just hoping we could tie it in. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's you know, and have, have recreation from one end of, the, end of the very far end of the lake to the other. Yeah. Just like our trails, you know. But, yeah. Well, maybe in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Anybody have any questions for Sarah? Thank you. Do you feel like you want to stay or do you want to go home? No, no, I'll stay. I'm here. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> All right. On to the town manager's report. Um, I think we should set a special budget meeting date. Um, I don't know if people are available next Monday. Yeah, that's what I thought we talked about that earlier. It would be Monday the 20th. At 4.30? Yeah, we already said that. And our regular meetings at 27. <coughs> we'll give you enough time, Paul. Uh, I mean, uh, oh, we got to start. We have to start. We're behind already. 4.30? 4.30. The only time we'll go into executive session on budgets and so we're coming into play with salaries and and stuff like that. For, personnel matters. For, for personnel matters. Other than that, it's open. Then answer any questions anybody has, or if you have quite some questions during it. Um, I just have a note here, the Miller Construction, the last I taught them a couple weeks ago, they were hoping to be out of the off the East Pulteney Bridge 
before Thanksgiving. There will be some tidying up that they're going to have to do uh, in the spring. Um, but the last I talked to them, they were they were projecting that the bridge would be open on or before Thanksgiving. Oh, that's good. They'll be paid. Well, yeah. that being said, do you know if they're going to work on the possible the potential project on the East Pulteney side of the gorge? The, 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 so there's two projects that, um, as part of the bridge, that this board may remember that um, town agreed to do some drainage issues for um, two of the folks on either side of the bridge. I'm in discussions with them about those projects that hopefully when they come back in the spring, they can undertake those two projects. Um, our engineer is, I talked to him and he sent me the plan for the project on the south uh, west corner of the bridge and he's developing the project for the north east corner of the bridge awesome. that I will then forward to Miller Construction and get their comments and price on. Can we notify the people that are on each side of the bridge that we because they're, they're, the bridge will be completed in Thanksgiving, that those projects are still going to happen? Yeah, I mean... I just don't want them to think that we dropped them. I, I know at least the one on the southwest corner of the bridge, they've had, they meaning the landowner and our engineer have had many discussions about, um, and, and myself had many discussions about different scenarios of they know we're working on it, and, but I think okay. the other folks know. I just don't want them to think that we, we just yeah, yeah. still uh, we're there. We're still going to do it. More. Okay. okay. Um, I do have Betsy Westcott has presented me a uh, beer and wine application for the EG retail, the Dollar General. Um, so she asked, she's asked me to present it to the board tonight. Yeah, we discussed that earlier. Um, if we discuss that, or we discuss the tobacco license. Yeah, it was a tobacco license that we discussed. And that would be secure, just like the tobacco. It'd just be like any other store that sells beer and wine. Right. Right. Yeah, we have to have a motion. Do all DJs have the outside go? Bear in mind. I don't know. I don't know that either. The, the security issue with the tobacco was the keeping it away from folks because it's all self checkout. I think this comes up as it relates to beer and wine. Is from their stock to stores um, and it's theft either, either way but maybe and they probably have to come over and, and double check it but I, I have a question whether we need another your mind store in town um just as a, as a matter of course it, 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 we wouldn't want it to get out of ratio with the other retail options that we have in, in town Well, how do you guys feel? Making sure that it's, you know, that they're going to be checking IDs every time since it's self checkout. That's, that's something that's not to us. That came up to us. That's the state. If we go in any place that has alcohol and beer, the state comes in has to make surprise visits and check that. That's something you have control on. Yeah. Any place that sells it, Chad that sell it. Keep it straightforward. I'm making a motion to approve that. Yeah. You're making a motion to approve it? Yeah. I'll second it. Are you seconding it? Any comments or questions by the board? <coughs> All in favor? Motion carry. Um, I did want to mention that I was going to mention this when Sarah was talking about the website. Um, I've had uh, two presentations from two different companies 
uh, about a notification system um, that I told both of those companies I would going to um, talk to the board about it when we get into budget season. And it's essentially a, um, a con the residents can register for uh, if there's anything that, like, for instance, if there's a water boil or something, water boil notice for the village, or if one road is down for because of a bunch of trees or something, that we could push a notice to the people that have registered um, to say, hey, there's a bunch of trees down on next road. It's, we anticipate it's going to be closed for our many hours. Um, and it's sort of in line with the website and um, that kind of thing. I was really impressed with the second uh, notification system. Um, so I want to let the board know that I'm going to be presenting some of those numbers in the budget. Okay. It's text message base. Um, again, I'm not Mr. Computer, but uh, it's it's either text message base or you can the second one that I had the presentation with. You can someone can say, hey, if there's something going on at Portland, just send me an email, and it'll push an email right to them saying, you know, what's going on. Just like an alert saying that there's a kind of kind of like Green Mountain Power <laughs> sends a sends yeah. an outage alert. Via text message to all the affected sure, people you know or something. It's like kind of like the schools do, like yeah. you know, yeah. such and such school is the, the bus is delayed we'll be or. Doing that, you. Yeah. You'd have to, yeah, someone here would have to be like, okay, there's a whatever issue's going on, or don't forget it's hazardous waste day next Saturday or, or whatever. That's actually a pretty good thing, <laughs> good communication tool. Yeah. Will that be able to be tied in with yours, Sarah, eventually, or is it going to be something separate? Tied into the um, website, the original website? There's a couple vendors that offer those um, services combined, and Paul and I have been talking about a little bit about those. Um, so I think we probably will need to. Are they pricey? Oh. Um, it's the two companies I've talked to, it's based on population. So they're each. In the three thousand dollar per year range. Okay. So it doesn't cost um, anyone if I want to sign up. It's, not it doesn't cost so. money. No, I don't think that. that like, no, it's just the town yeah. pays for that. Yeah. That instant communication. I have it too. Yeah. Well, kind of hazard communication or whatnot. I mean, for instance, someone called the clerk's office this afternoon saying, "If the weather is bad, how do I is uh, doing? How do I know if the select board meeting is canceled?" And that'd be something, oh, because of the weather, who would the select board be? Yeah. Of course, it makes people, you know, people are putting the data in. You have to live in this 24 hour, seven days per week world. Mm -hmm. Welcome. <laughs> with that, so it's, you're still kind of learning that whole thing. Would that be a two way working thing, like where somebody could also send a message and say, hey, there's a tree down on them? I don't think no. I, don't think I, I was kind of so. If the, if you don't mind me putting this in now, I, I've been it goes kind of hand in hand with what you're saying. I was wondering how if we don't personally, the road crew doesn't know that the tree comes down on 140 or whatever, and it sits there all night, and somebody doesn't call. You know, they see it, but they have a back way. They know the back way around, so they don't call and report it to anyone. How do I get people to contact us and let us know when something like that? I was thinking about trying to develop something that kind of goes along with. You can call Paul or call the office at each <laughs> If you have the messaging service yeah. in place, you can What's send that? In, you, if you have the messaging place in serve or service in place, you can send out information like when this happens, do this, and then without having to get an extra system if that's not in the budget or on the cards, at least people would have that piece of information to go back to and say, oh, well, this is what I do when this happens. I did more functionality for what Paul was recommending. This is a good idea to have it because it's yeah. nice you get a quick update that says it's, it's, you know. It's a good tool for communication. And plus, They're weather on one end of the town is very different than weather on the other end of the town. <laughs> so, most I'm people don't. Some of those straight line winds have got to take down the whole road in past. Right. And yeah. It might be like I didn't get an inch of snow. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's coming up. <laughs>
our budget's going to be pretty hefty this year. Um, I, I did have it under this part on, under executive session, but I don't think it needs to be under executive session. Um, two of the two of you were at the special meeting last week on the 8th, wherein a motion was made and seconded and passed that um, at, upon further consideration I thought needed to be expanded upon a little bit. Um, and I spoke with our town attorney and he agreed. So um, if, if someone wants to supplement that motion that was passed on uh, the 8th of November, I leave it to this. Make a motion pursuant to title 19 PSA section 710. The public good, necessity, and convenience of the inhabitants of the town told me require that town highway 67, commonly known as Lennox Lane, will no longer be a class three road, it should be a class four road as further permitted. And defined in 19 BSA section 302 Make a motion that the Pulteney Select Board shall within 60 days on November 13th, 2023, execute a cause to be recorded in the Pulteney Town Clerk's Office, a formal record of the highway reclassification proceedings to the Title 19 BSA section 708 at SEC. Notwithstanding the two previous motions, I further move that the town of Pulteney shall please provide maintenance for the said Lennox Lane through the winter of 2023-2024 and the spring of 2024, and to explore the possibilities and costs associated with improving the road and turnaround at the top of the road in the springtime of 2024. The basically is going to be a class four road with continued maintenance for this year, correct? Mm -hmm. we'll into in the turn around up there so we don't flip over. Right. Yeah. And then we have to do that for class four road anyways. Now <laughs> you made a motion. I'll second it. Any comments or questions? All in favor? Good. Motion carried. Which is good. I feel a little better for us. Do we do we have to contact them? Yeah, I'll contact because as you folks know, it was the, the winter maintenance for this year seemed to be a very thing of importance to the folks at that meeting. So I'll let them know. Maybe we can really look at that for next year and somehow put drainage so it doesn't wash the road out. But we'll get a cost on it anyway. Yeah. Start looking at it and get a good turnaround up in there. See if we can even flatten it out. Yes, we do. I Mm -hmm. Already. Okay. Good. Already done. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That's Any? good. I feel better about that because it was because of the lateness of the meeting changing class four. I felt all right, but not doing winter maintenance. So that looks good. But that's a that's a good way to do that without without shutting that right now. Especially this late in the season. Okay. Anything else, Paul? Um. No, not at the moment. You need to transact any other lap of select board business. Wetland Regional Planning Commission. Um, so the <clears throat> Board of Commissioners, the Regional Commissioners haven't met since the last select board meeting. I think there's a, a meeting coming up next Wednesday, probably. Um, the Transportation Advisory Committee did meet um, and it was a presentation on a transportation resiliency planning tool from VTrans. So there is a tool. Um, I'd be happy to share this with anyone who could use it. Um, and it's a web-based application to identify bridges, culverts, and road embankments that are vulnerable to damage from floods. Um, it also estimates risk based on vulnerability, vulnerability and criticality of roadway segments. So if that's okay, you yeah. can share it. Um, it was yeah. an overview of the tool. That, that, that's, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah. 
Yeah, we were just talking about that. It's already built. Like uh, yeah, the two whole guess. I mean, it's already populated with the data. No, I think so. There's trainings. Training videos. Actually, I'll share it with Joel right now. Thanks. Got your weekend plans. Training. So much for fucking off. Just the morning. Yeah. And that's it for our PCs. That's, that's it. it. Thank you. Yes. Uh, public comments and concerns. I have a couple of things that I didn't have written down. Okay. Yeah. We'll get there. Go ahead. Um, Burn Cliff Road, I forgot to add in that last week we rented a uh, mini excavator from Legacy Equipment and we spent a couple days uh, doing some well overdue ditching that was needed to keep the culverts clear <coughs> in the inner end of Fern Cliff Road. Simultaneously, our excavator was at the end of the turnaround, cleaning up the turnaround, cutting down some overgrown brush and whatnot, making it a safer place to get a tandem or a six-wheeler or an emergency vehicle turned around without having to back out the full length of Ferncliff Road. Um, we only know that that's incredibly tough because we were in that position a couple of years ago where the tandem had to back all the way out and could not turn around. And that's, you know, in inclement weather, that's that's a big no-no. So um, anyways, the turnaround that we use is privately owned. I was able to contact the landowner and get their blessing to move forward with doing that. And um, between that and the ditching, it was, it was a small project as far as timeline and cost on the town's behalf. But it was a big project because we really helped kind of make that a lot better than it's been in the previous years. We constantly have water running out down through where that ditch was non-existent. Um, the reason we had to, to rent this, the mini excavator is because it's just so narrow right there. You, our, our excavator is just way too big, the bucket's too big to be able to put in a small ditch like that. But I just wanted to throw that in there. It was, it was well overdue for some maintenance down through there. On, um, I did also forget to mention the Watkins Hill culvert replacement. I spoke to Ryan Filskov, and it's looking like late next week, which I know is Thanksgiving, um, or possibly the next week. So he, he's finishing a big project over in Mount Holly, and he's in the process of transitioning directly from there to us. So, you know, it'll speed things up for him to move everything directly from that work site to our work site. And the culvert I just saw. Yeah. Okay. The galvanized culvert behind the garage? Mm -hmm. No, he saw it. I saw it. Borders. Borders to pay for it. Yeah. Well, so I just clothes. wanted to keep you. Or, it will. There's only one person that'll be on the, um, the no winter maintenance that will be forced to use the end with no winter maintenance. Um, but he believes he can do it in a rather quick timeline. I don't know what that exactly what that means to him until we can have another, you know, pre-work site visit, you know, our final site visit while we're establishing, setting everything up and whatnot. And then maybe he can give me a better idea of what he thinks. So it'll be down for 24 hours, 12 hours, 36 hours, whatever. I, I don't, really foresee it going beyond 24 hours of the road closed, but there's one resident in there. Um, I've already left them a card today to give me a call and kind of give them a heads up on that, that that's happening soon. Uh, Watkins Hill is passable with their, their vehicle. So they can go up through the class four portion and it'll be all, it'll be good to go. So good. Good. Be a good project. Really and just so everyone that. knows, this is the project that was identified um, in that storm of <clears throat> April. April of 2019, yeah. um, where we we replaced uh, two culverts. I think that were side by side. Correct. Uh, that were that were um, dislodged in that storm and replaced them uh, on an emergency basis. But the state. Um, determined the state river management determined that we had to upsize the culvert 
Did we get FEMA? Did we get FEMA reimbursement? No, no, no. Well, we got FEMA reimbursement for the temporary repair. We did. For the temporary repair. Um, okay. We did get a structures grant for that project that uh, necessitates it getting done uh, by the end of December Good. of this year. So that's why we're. That's why you're hustling. Yeah. Well, between that and the ground freezing and snow coming at any given point in time, we don't want to run the truck over six inches of unpacked fresh gravel and make a mess. So it is hunting said, season. The sooner the better. And that road gets used a lot, so it just seems to be. Yeah, you're, you're they correct. Don't... There's a camp just past There's that one resident I'm talking about. So and they come and go down there all the time. Yeah, they might be hoping for a day. No, Blaze is a sign that so they don't go and then figure out to the side like of the beginning. Fifty feet shy, so even the landowner there could park on the other side of it and get a little exercise in there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Good steps. Get a little exercise. Mary Sue. Um, I forgot the name of the road, but the second road that you folks looked at up by the golf course, what was decided on that? Um, that was fair. Fair, yeah, Fairview more. Lane South. Um, the issue there was the fact that those roads are that those roads in that vicinity are maintained by a truck that carries um, salt, and because that's a, a gravel road, uh, we can't put salt on there. So the the one the one landowner that is serviced by the road has agreed that we'll just plow the road and not treat it with any materials. And uh, the board's going to enter into further discussion with that landowner um, after this winter to talk about <laughs> possibly discontinuing the road. Okay, so there's enough room for Joel's trucks to turn around up there. I don't know if that was one of the issues of that road. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Joel, but the issue was uh, negotiating the turn into the road. Um, but I think Joel feels bec because the smaller truck will be serviced in the other roads, uh, that that truck will be able to negotiate that turn into the road. Correct. But that, truck carries, that truck carries salt, and you don't want to put salt on the gravel road. Correct. So he'll plow it, but not salt it. Right. Um, another question. Um, do you know what the status is of the transfer station guardrails? Were they installed yet? And something with a scale? I don't go up there. My husband does, but he doesn't notice what goes on up there. Um, we've had a couple other discussions about the guardrail uh, with the with the contractor that gave us a quote. Um, you may recall that the concern was the ADA compliance. Is that what you're talking about, the steps? No, there was something about guardrails around where people throw their furniture. Oh, the furniture, the guardrails on the furniture. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're right. I think Dan was asking for a ramp instead of the steps. He said because people were half 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 half. steps. Yeah. Half and half. Uh, there was some discussion about the guardrail, um, and I had a couple different people look at the, the quote for the guardrail, and some felt it was high. The, the person that quoted it actually said, oh, I've already given you a discount because you're the town in that quote. So yep. um, I don't think – I know I know Mark Teeter was dealing – he's not here – was dealing with some of that stuff. So I, I don't know if he's made any progress because he talked to the contractors. Um, so I can report back when he's back in town. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bring that one next one. Next one. <coughs> Bring that the next one. <coughs> Mark's here. Oh, okay. Any other comments or concerns? All right. Do I hear a motion to sign the board or? Motion to sign the board or. Second motion. All in favor? We got to go into executive session for two contractual matters <clears throat> and no road reclassification. Paper. No, no, we just did that. It's just two contractual matters. Nick, can I see you just a second before we go? Sure. 
Sure, you want to read it? Yeah. Let him do his motion, please. Alan, you second it, Cheryl? Second. Um, 